It's on. not soccer because I don't really know soccer, but it, but it may be. So I'm thinking more in the tennis sphere because I think that's an interest that we both share. Does this person play tennis? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Critical Banter, the podcast that brings the Friday drinks chat to you. This week's episode, two brand new segments. We've got 10 question challenge and we got secret love. Wow. We, for that trap of the week, we got me and Miguel. We have Senny. Yo. We have Ro. G'day, g'day. And we don't have Kush, but we have this week's drink. My golly gosh, we're running out of budget. We have a homemade coffee. Mm. <laughs> no shops, no nothing. I'll give it a swig. I made it as well. Oh. I wonder how what this is gonna get oh, even. <laughs> wow, is it, S- Sydney has the best coffee, boys. Is it Makona, Nescafe? The magician never reveals a secret. I'll uh, give it a okay. eleven out of ten. Uh, Thank shock. you very much. <laughs> Anyways, anyone have anything from this week? Alrighty, boys, I got a story. Um, this week, I opened my wallet. I then proceeded to take out a hundred dollar bill, and then I threw the hundred dollar bill in the gutter. I then I, I, I love to burn money, and so before I reveal how I burnt my hundred bucks. I want to ask you boys if you have, you know, previously spent any cash that you regret. I mean, where to begin? Yeah, exactly. Where I could start with microtransactions, for example. Oh, that's exactly where <laughs> I was going to go. <laughs> because, yeah, famously, well, not famously, if you're a long time listener, you'll know from about two, three years ago, Kush and I have discussed our spending habits on the old Fortnite, Warzone, et cetera, et cetera. Spent, I think, a couple hundred or something like that on Fortnite skins over the years. And when we play Fortnite these days, I log in, I'm like, I don't like any of these skins, bro. I don't <laughs> like anything like, here. Can't you refund them to get the- uh, It's a, like a 90 day window or something like that. Oh. 180 day or something like that. Okay. Yeah, so, I remember I spent quite a bit during COVID on NBA 2K VC to upgrade my character, to get some you know, tattoos for my guy, to get some drip. Um, the other one that I came to mind that I got reminded of recently was when we were in Europe last year and we were in Amsterdam. And obviously you do things in Amsterdam and mm. we were in the red light district and- I was absolutely ravenous. Like I could not be held away from going to see a sex show. Like I was- <laughs> oh, I'm glad you said show, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad it ended with that. And it was that. 60 euros, which is a hundred dollars. Mm. And I was desperate to give the guy my money to go watch. Yeah. The and pimp. then we walked out after 20 minutes of the hour long show because it was just too much for us. What was the storyline for that show? It was a little red riding hood <laughs> who got fucking pounded by the wolf or some shit. I don't know. Was, so hang on, is it, is it like they're actually having sex in front of you? Yeah. What did you think it was? And what's the, what's the audience size out of interest? Dude, that's probably maybe, I reckon, 80 people. It's a decent amount of people. Mm. And we missed the first show. So we stood outside for an hour for the next one. Oh, so there's a pre-show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, right. And then the main act. And we handed over those four of us, 240 euros. So what's that? Maybe about 400 bucks. We were absolutely desperate to give. Something you could have seen online. Exactly. <laughs> for free. I, I think like that at least is an experience in Amsterdam. Maybe Was you do it. it? <laughs> Isn't, as in like you were ravenous for it. I'm sure like people have gone and, and went. But then like the microtransaction for Fortnite skins, I'll never understand. I enjoyed, it at, the, I enjoyed it at the time, but yeah. now it's- Lockdown was a sad time. Okay. So given all that, right? I think those transactions, look, at least they're somewhat valuable to you. This week I purchased, or, or you know, unfortunately purchased a year long subscription to Flow. The women's period tracker app. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> so, so I'll tell you what happened and how this came about. There could possibly be no reason for this. No. To be reasonable. Flow is a very popular app. It's quite. Yeah, it's extremely popular. For women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, I, so I would love to see Rose as a use case Explanation, here. Yes. So in my work, my job is to like, I guess, figure out new features. Be a creep. Or like- <laughs> All right, let's start. By the way, Flow uh, founded by two men. I did a little deep dive of this. 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 Yeah, um, like this most app. good things in life. And so I, on my job, in my job, my day to day job, my my thing is to like, I got to figure out new features, got to optimize current features. Our app that I work on has like an onboarding flow. So, and we wanted to optimize like the subscription rate in onboarding. Okay, so I am now going and subscribe to like a bunch of different apps. They give you like a seven to fourteen day free trial. So I was doing Duolingo. You know, I was doing um, yeah, a bunch of different ones. Flow was one of the, like the ones that I had to look at. And unfortunately I forgot to cancel it after, before my seven days was up. So now I have a year long <laughs> membership to this app. And again, I am calling out to the listeners. If, if anyone wants 
If any female listener wants a year long subscription to Flow, your missus doesn't want Flow. She already has Flow. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me know because I'm now stuck here with this nonsense subscription, which I'm never going to use. Surely you ask your job to just reimburse you the money. Nah, it's a startup. And it's honestly my blunder. Nah, I don't need to know that. What can I do? Be like, hey, guys, can you... Yeah, say, as part of my job, I incurred this cost. Please <laughs> reimburse me. Nah, this is a blunder. And I think it's more fun if I, if I cop the cost. It's like a little life lesson, you know? Just every week, is this what we're doing now? Just every week we're just giving away yeah, random crazy. shit. If you listen, every, this is insane to listen every week. Yeah, you never true. know what's going to be given away. True. Actually. Someone trying to scout my Hong Kong tickets, the dirty dogs. <laughs> got a DM. We even a free Aaron Chen tickets away. The guy's like, can I get your Hong Kong tickets? Unfortunately, that was not up for grabs. Oh, fucking hell. I had an ordeal trying to give away the Aaron Chen tickets. The first guy I messaged, based in Japan. Second person I messaged, based in Melbourne. <laughs> so t- shout out to Jack, who I finally gave the tickets to. You were third choice, mate, unfortunately. Wow. But enjoy the tickets. Oh, he's got the tickets. All good. Yet another update I have, boys, for you. Uh, it's The Neighbor from Hell. Uh, if you are a new listener, this is an ongoing series that I've been doing for maybe the last eight months now, where my workmate recently moved into a new apartment block in Neutral Bay. And it turns out the person she lives above is an absolute Karen. Um, and they've just been leaving really passive aggressive notes under the sliding notes under the door yeah Dude, that's so menacing as well so there is a new one this one's dated 22nd march um and it goes dear daniel last night hyphen this morning in your unit there was a 10 minute shower at 4 51 a.m and then there was almost <laughs> continuously running water for approximately half an hour after that i'm aware that your sister works odd hours as a nurse but this didn't appear to be in preparation for going out or after coming home <laughs> how do you know that Please, 40 minutes of invasive shower and water noise is unfair. It's too much, Daniel. And completely unreasonable for this time of night. Similarly, on Sunday, the 25th of February, 2024, (laughs) there was shower and water noise between 12.15 a.m. until 1 a.m. Again- On what what day, sorry? Sunday, the 25th of February. Okay. Again, this is an unreasonable 40 plus minutes of water noise during nighttime. As I've asked you before, and you said you would try to do, between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m., Please have very short showers and limit water use to an absolute minimum. We must all live together in this block. In harmony. And we are all entitled to the peaceful enjoyment of our unit as per the EPA guidelines, strata bylaws, and in particular, bylaw number six. There we go. We should have like a bingo card of like the things that she always mentions. Thank you for your compassion and cooperation, Marta. Unit 10, owner and resident. Mm. Mm, Little snide jab there. (laughs) Obviously our friend Daniel. Uh, is renting this place. Well, what's Daniel doing having a shower at 1am on a Sunday? So that one, I actually know what they were doing. So that was the weekend. Okay. That was <laughs> the week- you in there with him. <laughs> <laughs> that was the weekend of the F1. And so they, dro- they were driving uh, down to okay. Melbourne. So they got up pretty early in the morning to leave. So that's what that 4.51am was. I don't know what the Sunday 25th of February one was. 4.51am. That's like getting, I feel, I feel like that's reasonable. How do, you, yeah. how do you know that's not preparation for a nurse job? You know, what if you exactly. got a clock in at six? Well, maybe she's got a flow app as well and just keeping track of her nurse shifts. Uh, oh, that's, yeah, dude, Marta. This, honestly, I felt like um, a little bit more, I think this was a nicer letter. Nicer one, I think It so. wasn't like just jabs, jabs, jabs. I like the compassion at the end, like with compassion. I think someone actually has jab back at Marta. I remember my workmate mentioning it. I'll have to ask her for the story again. I'll come back next week, but it does sound like people are starting to strike back. Oh, so Marta is not just sniping Daniel. No, she's apparently tried it with a couple of people in the block and they've all come together now to create like a militia against Marta. So maybe that's why she's kind of reined her back a bit. But the problem is she's the own, she's the owner of her property. Yeah. You know what, what does mean? that mean? As in like, it's very hard to drive someone out of their property, which is what I would be trying to do to Marta. If you're, if there's a renter, yeah. I reckon you get Marta out the next, the next lease cycle. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. But if she's the owner, there's not much you can do there. But again, she's asking very unreasonable things. I mean, we've heard this story before. It's always the water. At least this time there was no opening yeah, and closing the, of blinds. The pipes, mate, they're right <laughs> in between the apartments. Like I'm, I'm really confused because it feels like she, every single time this happens, she sends a letter. Yeah. Which is so few and far between. We haven't got an update in like months. It's been a while, yeah. You know what I mean? So just if it's a one-off, I just don't see why she can't understand that. Apparently, might as well remember is a allegedly a shoe stealing whore. So remember, jury's still out on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. In case you, you are siding on Marta. <laughs> Again, this is this one's actually allegations. This one I don't believe. <laughs> this is just pure defamation on Marta's character. 
But my workmate said that she got home one night and for whatever reason, this doesn't sound right, but she left her shoes outside her apartment door. Mm. And then she suddenly heard like a door slamming downstairs. She heard someone coming rapidly up the stairs. Mind you, Marta is about 80 years old. <laughs> and then they came to the door and then they scurried back. And then by the time my friend went out and looked outside, her shoes were gone. Damn, not the Jordans. No, nah, exactly. So Marta doesn't have Must have pace. been Marta. Must have been Marta. Yeah. <laughs> no, but who else is going to steal? You know, no one else has a vendetta in that building. Is the WhatsApp group popping? Maybe we get some screenshots of the WhatsApp group of like the people ask. against Marta. There does seem to be quite a bit of animosity against Marta. Well, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, why is Marta like villainizing herself in this apartment block. She but, used to live with them too. But I think she's been doing this for a while because I think they spoke to their real estate agent about this and he just laughed them off. Like, ha just classic Marta. But it seems like these guys have had communication with Marta. Yeah, yeah they, have. they were like, well, now Marta knows that apparently one of them works a night shift as a nurse. Correct. Yeah. So they have probably had- trying to plead with her. Dude, this is why, miss. They've met face to face, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, how yeah. was that conversation? I will have to come back with an update on that one. Oh, damn. That would have that been incredible. Dude, they should have had a mediator, I reckon. So I think from- Should have been on live TV. <laughs> I believe yeah. Daniel went down one day a couple of months ago and tried to, you know, smooth things over. Yeah, make peace. Make peace. Mm. And in that he explained that his sister is a nurse and therefore that's why the water runs at odd times. Next time you come back, come back next week, give us the updates on like, is Marta 80? Cause first yeah. of all, we don't know that. Her just name is Marta. That feels like a elderly age. Give us like what happened in the negotiations. Yeah. And what the next steps are from Daniel. Does Done. he need some sort of assassin from the dark web potentially <laughs> to take out Marta? <laughs> Alrighty, to end us off this week, we have a new series. Uh, so our last series was quite a fruitful one, I must say. It was raiding your office snacks and wow, we did we have an absolute ball of a time. Um, so thank you to everyone who did contribute to that series. Um, I know there was quite a lot of you and I hope we got through all of them. Um, but frankly, we got tired of it. <laughs> I think we juiced that lemon as much as we could. Mm -hmm. uh, we bore the fruits of it and it's time to move on. So now we've got a new segment to absolutely run into the ground. <laughs> a new series we're calling Cop or Not. So this idea came when I saw a pair of Stan Smith shoes that had some Deloitte branding on the side. And I thought, mm. has this gone too far? You know, why are companies collaborating with Adidas, for example? What are we doing here? Mm. So in the series, can you please send in any kind of corporate merch or any kind of merch that your company has that really looks just odd? Just things that are out of the ordinary. Mm. Even normal. Even I want to see the good, oh, the bad, really? and the ugly. I want to see it all. Okay. All right. So any kind of merch that your company has, please send Because I want it. things that I would cop. That's Correct. true. That's Not true. just things I would not, you know? So so next week, I believe, Manu, you have something that your company has that we'll either decide if we want to cop or not. And remember, listen, this is free advertising for your company, essentially. Mm. So why wouldn't you take us up on this offer? I think, I, would cop, I think you guys would cop what I'm bringing next week, but we'll, we'll, we'll see next week. We'll figure it out. So- before then, we'll start with this week's one. So I already mentioned it before. So it's the Stan Smith Deloitte ServiceNow collaboration. <laughs> Three companies. A tale as old as time, you know. The juggernauts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Traditional <laughs> collaborators, if you will. The um, big three. You know, I was waiting for this to happen. It's been, you know, tantalizing for a while. Um, essentially, it is just a normal pair of Stan Smiths. Mm. And all they've done, and on the right heel, they've added a little Deloitte logo. And on the left heel, they've added a ServiceNow logo. There you go. There's your collaboration. Me personally, I'm having identity crisis <laughs> because I don't know. People don't know if I work for ServiceNow or Deloitte. Okay, first of all, great idea to collaborate with Adidas Stan Smith. I think that's delightful. Execution wise, in my opinion, heavily lacking. <laughs> Very poor. You know what this looks like? You know when you're a kid, you had those like temporary tattoos you could stick on yourself. <laughs> like you wet it a bit and put it on. <laughs> yeah. That's what it looks like. Looks like it's going to fade away in about two days. But in saying that, Am I copying a pair of Stan Smiths? Maybe I am. Is there, you, is there value add or value subtract with ServiceNow dude, and Deloitte? Value subtract. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're wearing Stan Smith. Oh, wait, no, actually. Why does it say Deloitte on it? Wait, hang on. Why does it say ServiceNow <laughs> on the other one? Is so that wait, that bloke who walk, rocks up to soccer with mismatched boots, bro? <laughs> it's That's like when, what it reminds it's me like of. like when Puma came out with those boots where one boot was pink and one, the other one was blue. Yeah. Like that was, was pretty cool, but that was good execution. But this one's like, if I work at Deloitte, do I only wear the right shoe? Do, am I not allowed to wear the left one with ServiceNow? Yeah, can I, is, is, is it actually, like if you work for Deloitte, do you get two Deloitte shoes? And if you work for ServiceNow, do you get two ServiceNow? Or is it literally you get one of each? I think it's the only photos I've seen is it's one of each. Okay, because that is egregious. 
It's just confusing more Who than anything. Who's the boardroom? Who's coming up with these ideas? Like, oh, let's let's first of all collaborate with ServiceNow. First, how does that come into the picture? The consulting firm and whatever ServiceNow does. Dude, I I don't mind corporate merch, but I'm not wearing my company's logo on my shoes, respectfully. Just a bit of white out. I reckon you can fix that immediately. <laughs> or so you what, just pay a, probably less for the blank pair. Well, I don't know. Do you get these? Do you reckon they gave it out for free? I don't think it's free, bro. No, Stan Smith's costs a hundred plus. Yeah, I was going to say, so Stan Smith's plus. about a hundred bucks. How mm. much would you pay for Stan Smith's plus Deloitte on it? <laughs> Dare I suggest that subtracts from the value. Exactly, that's what I mean. Unless it's given it, unless I'm giving it for free, I'm not copying. All right, let's say Manscaped come to us, bro. It's Stan, Stan Smith's, but, but Manscaped on the bottom. Are you wearing them out, out and about? Yeah, I have a, just a personal rule. I don't really like obnoxious branding, like, but it's to be fair, this is actually the least obnoxious branding because it's all the way at the bottom of your shoes. Okay, sorry. Let me say another rule that I have. Just a uniform thing. So like, you know, pairs. I'm wearing the same socks. Yeah. You know, I, mean? I can't be wearing two shoes of two different companies. Obviously, if I worked at Deloitte, I reckon I'd probably wear them to the office. But can you wear these outside of the office in a normal day to day? I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't. So they have these. Actually, have outside of Monday to Friday, <laughs> no use to you. Yeah, I'm not copying this. Not copying it? No, no cop. Our game this week is the 10 question challenge. Uh, Boys, I've got a couple of names for both of you. They're in my mind and I've actually sent you the other person's name. So Miguel, you have names for Rohit and Rohit, you have names for Miguel. And for example, we'll start with Miguel and you'll have 10 questions to try and guess either a historical person or TV character or sports person that I've assigned to you. And you can ask us any 10 questions, but they have to be yes or no questions. I'll give you a general theme of who this person is so you can at least have a bit of a head start there, but really it's up to you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Aye, 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 Captain. We will start with you, Miguel. And you both have the same two thematics. So the first round is going to be sports people. Mm. So I'm asking questions this round. You are asking, and it is a sports person. Is this person Australian? No. Oh, yes or no questions. Hit. Mm. That's why you got to think a bit. Does this person play association soccer? No. Do they play an American sport? Yes. All right. How many questions are that? Three, four? That's your third Three. question. Is this person male? Yes. Person a basketballer? Yes. Here we okay, go. How many, how many do I have? That left? is your fifth question. So you got five, five more Five more. I've got to really make use of these. Is it a currently active NBA player? It is. Did this person play... In the last year's All Star game, Sen, that's just, this is all you, buddy. <laughs> this is I'm gonna have to consult Google on this one. So wait, the la, the one that just happened? Yes, twenty twenty four, twenty four, about a couple of months ago. I'm pretty sure the answer is no, but I'm just gonna confirm that to you very quickly. Do you just know the rosters off by heart? <laughs> no, <laughs> but it gives me an idea if they're a really good player, uh, a mid player, see, or I a see. stinker. I see, I see. Because if it's like. LeBron, you would have easily said yes. You know what I mean? Correct, mm. correct, correct. Whereas now there's a bit of ambiguity. So it's a- He is not a current all-star. So it's above average player because you had to look it up. Yeah. If it's like some 15th player, like end of the bench, you would have I said wouldn't no. do that. I wouldn't do you dirty like exactly. that. Exactly, right. So you got, so that was your seventh question. So you got three more. So it's not an all-star, but it's someone you have picked that I, wish I should know. I like this deductive reason. Yeah, that's very Take good. Take some notes you. here, bro. This is exactly. very good. Has this person won a championship? Yes, yes, he has. You knew that. I did know that. That's a telling sign. That's something. The person played for Golden State. Yes. Currently, yes. All right. There's two people this, I have. This is the final question. But I have a question and then I guess. Yeah, you have a f- question and then you can guess. Does this person play shooting guard? Yes, he does. Is it Clay Thompson? <laughs> it is indeed oh, Clay wow, Thompson. Really? Well done. That's, well done. Dude, that's a masterclass. That is well done. All right, I was scared this game might be too hard, but Manu, that was expertly done. <laughs> all 10, I needed all 10, baby. Surgical wow. lie, that is, dude, if this was like an interview, I'd be very impressed with your deductive reasoning. That was excellent. Wow. So yes, it was Clay Thompson. You do get a point there, well done. Bro, pressure's on. No, but this is bullcrap because you guys know off the dome. He had help hints from me knowing some questions and not knowing other questions. Well, that's part of the game, mate. Okay, let's see. All right. Bro, you've also got a sports person. You may ask your questions now. Come it's on. not soccer because I don't really know soccer, but it, but it may be. So I'm thinking more in the tennis sphere because I think that's an interest that we both share. Does this person play tennis? <laughs> no. no. 
<laughs> All right, so you've burnt the first All question. Right. Oh, that would have been nice and paid off, but <laughs> it is what it is. Is this person a male? Yes. Is this one of the three most popular sports in Australia? Yes. Yes, I'd say yes. So now I'm thinking it's football, cricket, maybe footy. All right. Does this person play for a club in Europe? No. No. Am I, am I just completely off here? How many is that sent for? Four. That's your fourth question. Listeners, I would encourage you to go watch this on YouTube because Kush would have put the name of the person on top of Ro's head right now. Mm. Okay, is it soccer? No. No. God. Is it cricket? Is that your sixth question? Yeah. No. no. Bro, what sport could it be? Is it, is it NRL? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my God. <laughs> and he That's, has how many left? That was your seventh question. Okay. So you got three more questions. <laughs> <laughs> This is like when Homer Simpson went to the um the, the Quickie Mart boss. It's like, you got three questions. Like, are you really the head of the Quickie Mart? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. You? Yes. Thank you. Come again. That's all the questions you have. <laughs> okay. So now I have three questions to guess this footy player. Realistically, the player has to play for Penrith, the Eels, because they're right outside. So I'm thinking those two themes. So, okay. I'll go. I'll go. Has this team won a premiership in the last... Panthers won three in a row. Ten years. Oh. All right. So maybe the Eels. Maybe the Eels. How many questions left? You got two more two questions. questions. I'm just going to have to bank on the fact that it's the Eels. Now, do I know, do I know this player? That's yeah. not my question. Do I know this player? <laughs> <laughs> That's your ninth question. No, no, no. You 100% know him. Is it the Hain player? You 1,000% know him. All right. Is this person a current player? No. All right. How many questions left? You have one, one question, question and then you guess. Okay. So this person is an inactive rugby player. Their club hasn't won a premiership in the last 10 years. Is this person in jail? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is this person Jared Hayne? Yes. Is Jared Hayne. <laughs> That is unreal. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I was worried after you burnt three questions on soccer, Mate, cricket. That's what the greats Bur do. He burnt seven questions <laughs> to get to NRL. Dude, you should. Manu's first question was, is this person Australian? Mm -hmm. That would have been a great place to start. Mate, it doesn't matter, bro. The job gets that done. Look, dirty or clean, the job gets yeah, done. That's it, what the greats do. The ends just by the means, <laughs> mate. We both got there. Wow, all right. Really? One all. All right. After the first round, it is one all. You both took all 10 questions to get to the end. So fair play to that. The second round and the deciding round will be animals. I've sent you both an animal each for each other. Uh, you're going to have to get whoever, if you both get this correct, whoever gets in the least amount of questions will be the winner. We'll start with Manu. You're up first. Is this animal on land? Yes. Can you find this animal in Australia? No. By, do you mean in the wild? Like you can see it at a zoo. Yeah. You can see any animal in the zoo, but do really? you mean, yeah. You can't see it in the wild. We'll give you that. Yeah. Okay. All right. But it can be a zoo animal. So it's not, so it's not like a fucking platypus Sorry. or a- Both of yours are zoo animals. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> platypus is also at the zoo, just quietly. Okay, this animal is not native to Australia. <laughs> right. Let's just do that. Right, we'll do that. We'll do that. Is this animal bigger than a human? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Does this animal have four legs? Yes. Yes. Does this animal have a long neck? No. <laughs> <laughs> what could you be thinking? Sen, are you scared of this animal? Don't is answer it, for him. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not. No. There's not a tiger or a lion. But you knew that anyway. It's not bigger than a human. Yeah, they can be somewhat. Tigers and lions. Yeah, come on, Manu. Oh, that shows my- Wait, sorry. I would say they are bigger than humans. Yeah, they are. They're huge. They're massive. I was lions. Thinking, are you yeah. going height-wise? Yeah, I was thinking height-wise. <laughs> okay, okay. You stand them up on That was legs. your sixth yeah. question. You have four more to go. Is this animal a primate? What does that no. mean again? Like, it's not like a- Like, like a monkey, monkey, like a monkey, monkey gorilla, no, et cetera, et cetera. No, 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 no. Bro, what is left in- a, I haven't been to Taronga in like <laughs> five plus years, man. Wait, think of the capybaras. But yay high. <laughs> Um, All right, that was your seventh question. Three more to go. I, I would say if I were to be like sporting here, I'd go find the region of where yeah, it's from. That's I where say, I would aim. It's from Africa. It's yes. from Africa. That doesn't help me. That just uses a question. <laughs> <laughs> but at least now you have African animals in mind. I don't know any more, <laughs> man. So if I'm on safari. Mm. Yeah, good start. Yeah, what, what the hell seeing? am I? I'm seeing- You've already locked out, knocked out one of them. Right, relax example. now, yeah? Let's just let this man go free now here. <laughs> Is this animal orange? Not no. orange. You got one more question. <laughs> it's animal gray. 
What color? No. Gray. No. All right. Time for a guess. Oh, I don't fucking know. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. But all the animals I'm thinking of, like I'm scared of. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm left with like crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> Alligator, but that's also in like out of the water. That's also scary, dude. I'm yeah, that's what I mean. I can't crocodile. think of a non-scary animal that's big. Flamingo. It's a zebra. Oh. One of the quintessential animals. I've forgotten. Mate, on the safari, you're looking yeah, at the wildebeest, mate. you're looking at the elephants, and then you see the zebras at the watering I'm hole. I'm thinking of lions and tigers, man. That's just- The humble animal. And look at your Juventus shirt, my friend. Yeah, that's oh, what gave it away, the Juventus go. shirt. All right, you just need to get it. Really? Oh, and you've okay. won. All right, I've sent you an updated animal. I'll, I'll start off with Manu's first question because I think that's a good one. Is this a land animal? Yes. Yeah. Is this native to Australia? No. Is this animal, yeah, is it scary? Yeah, I'd I say would so. say yes. Okay, are we, are we in Africa? Uh, sorry, no, no, we're not in Africa. Would you find this animal in a forest? Potentially. I think they do sometimes go to forests. Are we in North America? Yes, we are in North America. Yes. Okay. So American animal who sometimes goes to the forests. Is the animal bigger than a human? Yes. Yeah. All right. This is really leading me towards bear, grizzly, black, brown. Is it a bear? I want to need a specific- No, what? The, you just <laughs> told me it was not a genre. Is it a bear? It is a, I it said is grizzly a bear. bear. Let's go. Well done. No. Well done. That was actually, that was a lot of fun, I will say, Sam. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. So go to manscaped.com, use code TCB for 20% off and free shipping. Boys, 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 what's our favorite part of the package? Well, I'll tell you what my cousin's favorite part of the package is because they, again, as I've mentioned multiple times, here from New Zealand. They saw the box that I had sitting um, on my desk and I have a couple of packages. Look, I'll open the window here. Manscaped sent us some gear. I've got a couple of boxes unopened. They said, what's that? I said, brother. Let me show you. I then proceeded to do a beautiful tour of the performance package. This one was the, the what are they up to? 5.0? Yes, 5.0. This one was the 4.0. So mm. the, the series before. I showed them the boxes. I showed them the, the razor. I showed them the shaver. I showed them the nose Dick. trimmer. Oh, okay. I showed them the ball deodorant. I showed them the travel kit. Mate, how much stuff is in this bag? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bag of goodies. Anyways. It's like a clown car. It just keeps coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave them all that gear and I said, go ham. So they started using the stuff. They came back to me. I'll tell you what they said. They me. all started using it. Well, two of them. I, I need to know, did they go away and use it? Or did you have a live demo and then they also use it in the same room as you? No. Did you demo at all? <laughs> there was no demo. They all went right. and used it in their own time. Wait, they both used the same one. They had, I have two boxes. Uh -huh. I actually have like four boxes just quietly. <laughs> Maybe another giveaway potentially. <laughs> Anyways, how'd they find the box? Mate, I'll tell you what they said. Again, they've been saying what I've been preaching and what we've been preaching for the last X amount of years. They loved the boxes, right? Not only that, they loved the, um, the, the shaver. Now they were a bit hesitant to, to shave the downstairs. So they used it as like a beard trimmer because they've both got beards. It's good for that as well. Yeah. So they loved it. Use the code TCB, support us, support Manscaped. They give you good gear in return. 20% of free shipping, TCB at checkout. Ladies and gentlemen, we are got a new segment. It's called Secret Loves. And the idea of the segment is this, okay? What do people in Sydney, what do they secretly love, but they just won't admit? Mm -hmm. And so this is old news, but I recently reread it. And I wanted to share because I truly think this is quintessential. Kyle and Jackie O, right? No one listens to them, apparently. Yet somehow they've got a $200 million deal over 10 years, radio. How? That's crazy. So can someone reveal me this? Because it seems like everyone, if you ask someone, hey, do you listen to Kyle and Jackie O? No. I think you're getting a visceral reaction back. Like what? I'll yeah. take it one step further. Not even Kyle and Jackie, just commercial radio in general. But 
some of you little bastards are listening to these these people <laughs> because two hundred million dollars is Joe Rogan number. And I wouldn't say some. I think a lot of people are actually listening. But who? Yeah, who, who are these people? No one's good. I feel like no one admits. I remember I had a little secret pleasure where Mikey and Emma were on the radio on ninety. It wasn't that secret, brother. Every morning when you gave us a lift to school, it was on from the start to the finish of the ride. No, but I was ashamed because like, I feel like Carl and Jackie are right. The reason why they're so popular is because they, I think they really introduced smut into yeah. like the, uh, the commercial sphere. And so people would have this like, guilty pleasure listening to like these segments that they do, which is like, oh, oh my, there was a crazy one. It was like, they have a heart rate monitor on. They get the girl friend to dance and do some sort of like strip show type situation. And they monitor the heart rate of the boyfriend. And then they get a random woman in to do the, like a similar sort of dance. And then if the boyfriend's heart rate was higher for his girlfriends, they like won some money or a prize or something. The other girl that they got was the girlfriend's mum. What the fuck? So, you know, like, these are the segments that these blokes are chucking out. Just pure smut at 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And do you know this, Howro? Uh, this is from secretly listening potentially. No, I don't secretly listen to these guys, but these are just common knowledge. You know what I mean? I will say I would love to be a producer for Carl and Jack here because apparently no idea is off limits. Just Everything flies. Any debaucherous thought you have, just absolutely send it into the airwaves. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, can you think of any other Carl and Jackio like skits that they do? Do oh, you know any just, segments? I I actually have only listened to them a handful of times, and every time I've listened, it is just it's always Kyle talking about his penis or. The, yeah. s- the vast amounts of sex that he has. And I'm like, I don't want to th- listen to this. Carl like, Sandlands this- might be the most unlikable man in Australia. Oh, dude, he's a yeah. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? We'll bleep like that bleeped? Out. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's a twat. But I feel like it's a lot of idle listens just to, you know, be devil's advocate. I feel like it's people that just like, flick on the radio and just leave it playing, but don't really listen. Surely not. Nah, $200 million yeah. is a bit more than- uh, no, I think that's what's bumping it from 100 to maybe two. Ah, oh, but 100 is still a lot. Hey. Mate, dude, I dead set haven't listened to radio like properly in so, so long. Ah, uh, I still dabble here and there. You know, in the mornings, Triple J, I'll give it a go. The only time I listen to the radio is when I'm having a two minute drive down the road and yeah. I can't be bothered plugging in my correct, phone. Correct. Like, even then I'm still listening to- Really? I, I, I listen to podcasts, like sometimes five minutes at a time. No, I can't do that. So if it's like a five minute drive, I'll just chuck yeah, Triple J on. Yeah, the station, and- don't need to plug in my phone, whatever. Mm. I know the way, I don't need to put, get Google Maps up as well. But 200 million is crazy numbers. It's insane. But yeah, there are some people who, you know, they You're will right, never admit it. A lot of sickos out there. Alrighty, another thing I feel is Bondi. And I know even on this podcast, there's a, Sen and I are strong. Anti, is anti-Bondi the word? Overrated. We love yeah. to call it overrated. So does Caution. So does a lot of people out there. But I think Ro represents what, you know, senior sides really feel. They, they, they like Bondi. They like going out. If you go to Bondi, we're all taking pictures. We're all enjoying the walk. It's, all, it's a nice day out. I think- a lot of Sydney siders love to, it's a, the cool thing to rag on Bondi and everything, but deep down, I think a lot of people like it. If you have a look on Reddit, if you have a look at the sentiment on Bondi, the suburb, I think there is just pure hate. It's filled with people like the people are pretentious. Um, the suburbs are dumb. Like everyone's rude or racist or this and that, or whatever. But I feel like that may be just because people maybe can't get to Bondi. Jealousy. Bit of jealousy, I Tall feel. Tall poppy syndrome. I think so. A little bit of that, you know, a little bit of that. No, I, I don't agree at all. Mm. Uh, I think it's rightfully hated. Um, I think most people, there might be a small subset to your point that might hold it, you know, re- hold it in, you know, high regard. But I think most people rightly have the right impression of Bondi and you can't change my mind. Mm. But why do you say that though? Because I feel like, yeah, it's so popular to just be like ragging on this suburb, but why? It's because it represents everything that you have to despise. It's the elite, you know, the one percent, you know, the people that look down on us. So why would I go and you know kiss their feet? No one's asking to kiss the feet. It just could be enough. I'm just saying, enjoy the beach and have a meal. Yeah. Nah, mm-hmm. but even then, I have to venture into their home ground. You know. Mm, would you I- immediately? I feel out of place. Yeah. If I offered you a house in Bondi, I'll take it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Tomorrow I'll go. A house in Bondi, free house. Absolutely. Right? Or a free house in Bondi. Um, like, yeah, let's say ride on me Bondi. or something. You're taking Bondi? Bondi so you secretly love it. No, because just for the property prices. No, no, forget nah, money yourself. It's because you're not there, mate. If you're in the 1%, <laughs> you're loving it. Let's not be yeah, silly. Obviously, you know, if I was part of them, if I was in the you know elite group mm. rubbing shoulders with them, absolutely. Exactly. You I'd only love hate it because you're not there. And is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with yeah, that. Exactly. But I feel like there is a bit of, there is. Because yeah, if you truly love. hated it, if you truly hated it, mm. you would still t- not take it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, Alrighty. What's your point? Okay. My point is, if you were part of it, you'd love it. Mine's City Rail. I actually mm. think City Rail is quite good. I know we all love to shit on it and everyone, you know, the meme, City Rail, et cetera, et cetera. But comparatively to the other cities in this country, we've actually got a great rail system that connects most of the city. They run mostly on time, double decker trains. It's actually not that bad. Our fourth podcast member is not here because of the trains <laughs> on this day. <laughs> No, but that's a you know rare occurrence. Lo- yesterday we had a month's worth of rain in one day. Correct. Name me three train systems that could handle that. Japan, I feel like Japan's would handle an outlier, bro. They're state of the art, mate. They're A grade. Name me two more. I can't name you two more. I feel like I feel like I don't know about the subway system in the UK. I thought it was pretty good. The tube. The tube. Pretty good. Better than City Rail. No, I don't know. No, but you can't compare. It's not comparable. That's uh, that's just within the city. Yeah, correct. That's not like going across suburbs. City rail connects the whole of Sydney, right? Mm -hmm. Comparing just to London, then compare it to like the light rail. And I'm sure the light rail's running today. (laughs) You know what I mean? City rail also goes from all the way out to Penrith, down to Wollongong, up to Newcastle. What is it? Country link. Yeah, exactly. You can link up the country, mate. Oh, that is true. And and people love to hate it, actually. Dude, dude, it's- Bruv, any sort of disruption, I'm seeing stories going up. Correct. I'm seeing like tweets going up about how much they hate this system, how much they hate public transport, this and that. Look, some of it might be justified, but honestly, all in all, it's actually a pretty good system that we have. Like yep. it's the most, it's such a low hanging fruit to go after City Rail. Like it's such a easy butt of the joke, but genuinely, objectively, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I feel like City Rail, like secretly they do love it. Absolutely they do. They love being, I mean, they love being able to go from one place to another. Honestly, it's pretty cheap as well. Like. In Melbourne and overseas, you pay regardless of how far you travel. Yeah, exactly. So it's like $5 and it doesn't matter if you got off one stop later. It charges you for the whole trip. City Rail, you know, pay as you go, pay as how much you use. Yeah. That's delightful. Beautiful system. All right, next one that I have, Vivid. Okay, I have been a massive proponent. I love to hate Vivid, but how can you not like the pretty sparkly lights that let you go out of the house in winter? It's the dumbest thing ever. You're not getting much bite here, right? No way, dude. People, you guys love to hate it, but actually it's not a bad system and installation. I feel like it's decent. Dude, it's actually the lowest form of entertainment. No, it's like, not. Quite literally. It's just bright lights. Yeah, and cool projections and displays. What's not to What's love? the difference between you and a moth, really? No. <laughs> just attracted to bright lights. Are you serious? You're not telling me that in a little part of you inside, doesn't mind Vivid. And oh, you don't know what Vivid is. It's just literally a light installation. When is it? June? Yeah. It's May, in, June? In For a couple of weeks. Coldest of winter. Correct. Yeah, it's they designed, want to get you out of the house. Correct. Designed to stimulate the economy. Come through. We do like these beautiful light exhibitions. Across the harbor, Darling Harbor, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Whatever, bro. I went once. Nice. That I'm not going good. I'm not going year on year for this. It's like the Easter show. Like you only go once every couple of years. You're really telling me every year without fail, you're going out to Vivid to see the same fucking lights. It's different lights though. It's not, it's the same lights. The thing is like, cause I was trying to think, my cousins are from New Zealand, over from New Zealand. I was trying to figure out what to do. And this is what our great city has to <laughs> offer. But I'm saying if you come from somewhere else, it's like a good thing to do. And even as a Sydney side of myself, yeah, I'm going to Vivid. I'm just going to see what it's about. It's like one day out of your time, one Isn't evening. It a bit fucking sad. Like we claim, you know, Sydney is this great world-class city. What do we have to offer in winter? LED lights. Don't disband. No. Like, you can say that about anything. Like, what, what are your thoughts on fireworks? Again. Overrated. No. Overrated. No. Overrated big time. No. What do you mean? You guys don't like fireworks. I like them. I have, I have the perfect amount of respect for them and I rate them the correct amount. I'm not going out of my way to see fireworks. Correct. New Year's Eve is the one night of the year where I'll actually, I'll sit and I'll enjoy the fireworks. Outside of that, I have no interest. I'm one step further. I might not even go to the city for the fireworks. Oh, but I'll still watch on TV. TV. Oh, but I don't care if I'm watching something else, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, come well, mi- no. like come midnight if I have a music what, video on. What uh, else could you possibly be watching at there midnight? There could be a midnight show or something. I don't know. There could be a little midnight show on a different Back channel. Back to Vivid. Back to, okay. First of all, that's subjectively wrong. Like the Darling Hub, I just want to talk about fireworks for one more minute. Darling Harbour does 9 p.m. fireworks every Saturday. Yeah. If I'm around the city, hey, of course I'll, I'll sit there and watch the whole show. If we're doing overrated, underrated, underrated those f- random fireworks. Yeah. Because no one really knows about them, but it's a lovely show. But back to Vivid, I think a large proportion of Sydney would disagree with you. You know what I will say though? A lot of people have the same as us sent. Like they hate it. They say all this, all that. But then you see the crowds year on year. Packed. It's made Carl Jackie over again. Wait, who's going? Exactly. Who's going because it's so unpopular? Because whoever I talk to, Viv, I've never heard someone until Ro on this segment say, oh, I love Vivid. Or, 
you know, I look forward to it, but legit every year, I don't go because the crowds are huge. The crowds so are who's huge. So who's going? And then the food on offer there is absorbently expensive. Ah, but that's, ah, it's what that's you, what you part and parcel of exactly. a show like that. Like I, or me, I'll put my hand up. I have slandered Vivid multiple times on this podcast, but if I look deep down, right, truly <laughs> introspect, it's not bad. Okay. Right, the next one for me is Melbourne. This is a huge one because of the whole Sydney versus Melbourne conversation, but look at us boys. Mm. Every year, how many times are we going to Melbourne and enjoying it? Once. Even still. No, I, I go like three times a year to Melbourne. Exactly. And even if people just go for a weekend, just eat food and whatever, people are enjoying it so much, but the minute they land back in Kingsford fucking Sydney airport, <laughs> or oh, Melbourne's a worse city, or oh, Sydney's so much better, blah, blah, blah. Why is everyone going to Melbourne so often then? It's just a change of scenery. That's all it is. I could say the same thing about if I went to Newcastle, if I went to Wollongong. But you're not going, wow, to, New you're not going there every year. You're not going to Queensland every year. You're not going all these other places every I year. I could. You got, but you don't. You it's go to Melbourne. All these events happen to be in Melbourne. The F1, the Australian Open, et cetera, et cetera. A weekend away, Melbourne's, I think, top destination for most people. The thing is, yeah, people because people do love to hate Melbourne and it's really for no reason. Like I think people in Sydney feel insecure that Melbourne objectively is low-key a better city than us. So what they'll do is they'll start disparaging this. I'll be like, oh, whatever, bro. You know, oh, AFL, they, get out of here. The coffee's not even that good. This and that. But, you know. The minute you step foot in Melbourne, you're getting like 10 coffees, you're getting brunch everywhere. Yeah, you're going to go to the little laneways. You go on the scooters. It's just called a holiday. You'd do the same thing if you went to Europe. If yeah, you but I'm not hating Europe. on Europe. I'm not hating on Asia. I'm We're not only hating because on... it's right there. And they started with us, by the way. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> little finger pointing, huh? <laughs> Yeah, do you think it's the other way around? Do you think Melbourne is hate Sydney? 100%. They have the chip on the shoulder against us. We are, we don't care about them. You reckon? Yeah, we don't don't think about them. Mm. No, I think there's Sydney a lot has, of people. Sydney's trying to pick fights with other countries, you know, like your New Yorks, your Londons of the world, who probably think the same about us as we think of Melbourne. Like, fuck off, you know. <laughs> so that's Melbourne to us. Just nah, the small little so, brother. I think there's so many people in this in this Sydney city that are hating I Melbourne. I agree, I agree. But are in, looking forward to a trip down to Melbourne. Yeah, if their mates are chucking, let's go to the F1 or let's go to the tennis, you know, inside they'd be like, oh, but it's, well, why is it in Melbourne? But they'll be like, I'm definitely on the next flight there. Mm, they're looking sure. on TikTok, best brunch spots in Melbourne. No and doubt about salivating. it. Salivating. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right, my one is the housing market, but I'm going to caveat, <laughs> if you are a, a house owner already. <laughs> Do those people hate it? I feel like they <laughs> they they hourly love it, no? Actually, no, no. I feel like I feel like there is a bit of truth in that. Yeah. Because like there's a lot of our friends at the moment who have started to purchase property. So they're on the other side of the fence now. Correct. And then if you're asking them about the um the <laughs> the housing prices and the housing crisis, yeah, outwardly, outwardly they're gonna be like this is terrible. It's the yeah, worst yeah, thing ever. Yeah, yeah. I hate this inequality, this and that. But if you have a look at their ballot forms, liberal number one, dare <laughs> I suggest. <laughs> Seeing the equity in their house rise. Yeah. Oh, dude, they probably get erections at the thought of <laughs> interest rates falling. I, I think this is actually a good one because, yeah, you're right. This is quintessential. People outwardly will be like, nah, this is terrible. Everyone should own a yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know as soon as, as, soon as I own you, a property. Exactly. I'm changing my tune immediately. <laughs> I would love the property as price soon to as, go higher. As soon as the escrow finishes and settlement finishes, <laughs> you better believe I'm voting liberal. I, I would put my Make America Great Again cap. And the day goes on. <laughs> All right. right, my final one is Western Sydney. I agree. I think people love to hate on it. Correct. But what's there to hate? I think case in point right now, everyone from east of Sheffield is flocking to where right now? Lakemba. Lakemba. Liverpool. Liverpool. Why? The Ramadan night markets. Mm. Everyone's there TikToking away. Mate, you're happy to come for that, but every other day of the year, you're just shitting on Western Sydney. Piss it, off. You meet someone at work, they say from Western Sydney, there's all this hubbub about Western Sydney. When it's convenient to you, you love it. Yeah, exactly. What's that about? I, um, I recently had a friend who I took to uh, like Western Sydney for the first time. They're a staunch- They person. do tours now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the tour guide apparently. Yeah. So I was like, I'll come Safari, through. Safari, they call it. <laughs> You see the zoo animals? Is that what you're implying? <laughs> Anyways, I took it, I'm talking to Western Sydney and he just had like a idea of this like place, which is completely misguided. He's the like, wild, wild west. Dude, he literally thought Western Sydney was a third world country. He's like how in his mind that appeared. Well, because, that's, that's how the media, you know, shows it as. Yeah, yeah. Violent Lebanese gangs, yeah, exactly. this and that. Did he bring like a bulletproof vest and something <laughs> like that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm with an AR-15. No. So I brought him there because he lives in like the east. 
and he's like a, a work of mine. So I was like, come through. I'm going to show you like some good Lebanese food. So I took him to Jasmine in oh, Auburn beautiful. to have a delightful feed, right? We went around, had a little bit of a circuit and he changed his tune. He changed his tune a little bit. So I feel like if people just gave it a chance, they would like it. Or just don't, and we'll enjoy Western Sydney to ourselves, you know? Ah, let's bring everyone through. There's so much good stuff there, I feel. Dare I suggest Western Sydney has a better sense of community than Eastern Sydney? A hundred percent. Is That's- that even, is that up for debate or is that just, it's just a fact? No, because I think like people are more willing to like talk to their neighbours and that sort Correct. of thing. And so like, and they're probably, I don't know, the same a- ethnic, ethnic background. background yeah, so they have yeah, that yeah. in common, this and that. So I feel like that's probably a true. Dare, would I go one step further and say, is Western Sydney safer than Eastern Sydney? Okay, let's <laughs> let's not be silly. I'm here. not going that step. That step I'm not doing. But why do you think people don't like Western Sydney or, or, or secretly Well, okay, love it? so if we're looking at it from the media's point of view and the elite's point of view, Western Sydney is where you just dump all the immigrants. It's the lower socioeconomic areas. Racial. Racial. A lot mm. of it comes down to racial stereotyping. Yeah, it's not by the beach. It's not this pretty little picture. Correct. That- you want Sydney to be known as. But I feel like there are people, Loki, in the West who love to hate Western Sydney, but secretly love it also. Nah, surely not. If you're yeah, living- that's like, that's like immigrants that come to the country and they want immigration policy <laughs> to keep the immigrants out. It's like the same, it's the same thing. What are you doing, bro? Friendly fire, relax. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. They want to be like the others, but they've themselves have forgotten where they've come from. Relax. Relax. Yeah. inside the house. The brown guys yelling, stop the boats. <laughs> exactly. It's audacious. Yeah, bro, there was like a politician, I remember. Like a yeah, brown like a, politician. Dude, I'm pretty sure it was a brown politician in Blacktown. In Blacktown. No who was calling for anti-immigration, get rid of the refugees, you know, limit this, limit that. And it's like, I, I just cannot believe the uh, What do they call it? Uncle Tom? Like that yeah. is- It's a narc. Yeah. All right, Mona, what do you got? I've got one more. It's way more niche than these previous ones. I'm going to say- the George Street KFC in Maccas, mm. right? <laughs> what? <laughs> when we walk past that at, let's say, 5 p.m., 7 p.m., going, ugh, what is that? I yeah. hate it. It's dingy. It's disgusting. <laughs> but come 2 a.m., yeah. it is the greatest food source known to man. Yeah. You are fiending it. When you walk past the smell of that KFC, it's the greatest thing, and it yeah. saves you on a night out. But I'm a different man at 2 a.m. <laughs> than I am at 7 p.m. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter, man. You love to hate it, but when, when the it comes calling, yeah. it's the best food on earth. When the going gets tough, mate, it's an oasis in the desert. I was going to say, seeing that KFC at 2 a.m. is like showing a thirsty man a well. Mm. You know, essentially, you're <laughs> like, brother, this is salvation. Yeah, so when you have it good, you shouldn't hate on the well. You shouldn't hate on the KFC when it... Saves it every single night. So what, if I can't handle the KFC at its best, <laughs> sorry, yeah. at its worst. Yeah, you can't have it. it at its best, mate. Absolutely, you can't do that. Because people, yeah, you walk across George Street KFC, you say, this is a terrible establishment. They can't even do the chips right. Yeah. You know, the chook's all wrong. But in your heart of hearts, you know. Especially the Maccas as well. That Mac is a little down the road. Everyone calls it dingy, disgusting, dirty, what? never step foot in it. Again, past midnight, the most full place. In Sydney. It's there for you in your time of need. Respectfully, I can't agree with the Mac. That, <laughs> that, that's, that, first of all, I got, I got pepper sprayed outside of it. So I have like a- <laughs> That's more of a you problem. Affinity, like a <laughs> negative affinity towards it. Secondly, okay. KFC, I feel like the people, for some reason, when they frequent KFC, I never see anyone like throwing up. I never see anyone. Oh. I just see blokes eating KFC ravenously. We saw someone get bashed in the KFC, bro. What are you talking about? No, no. We left that KFC oh, okay. two minutes before someone got stabbed, I think. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. That aside. That aside. <laughs> I feel like there's a bit of decorum in the town hall KFC. Because it's so small. But but I'm saying like in that Maccas, people- Okay, Sen, there's literally a video of you and my partner fighting- <laughs> Correct. While she uh, while she proceeds to try and throw water over you, coke at me, coke at you. That's like a regular occurrence. Occurrence. Correct. You have like these little kids who would just start punch ons. For some reason, in the KFC, everyone gets their singer box. They sit down. There's a lot of laughs and there's no aggression minus the stabbing. Is the KFC audience more mature than the Macca's audience? Maybe. I want to say yes. I don't know. I've never had. I've never been like, ooh, brother, at the yeah. at the KFC in in um, George Street. So my final one is the hate towards Sydney. So for our overseas listeners, let's make no mistake of this. The rest of the country hates Sydney, right? And everyone in Sydney complains about the fact that we are hated by everyone. They fight back. Correct. We're like, you know, what do you guys know about us? Blah, blah, blah. But in reality, I think we love it. Mm. I think we love that everyone else hates us. And I I think we relish the fact that everyone else hates us. And 
really that we complain about it, but deep down we know it's, we, we love the attention. What's that saying? If you don't have haters, you're not doing it right. Correct. Mm. And Sydney has the most haters. So it validates a jealousy. You want to be us. You hate us because you ain't us, mm. as they say. And we mentioned before with Melbourne, I think it's case in point with that. Melbourne will always, you know, point fingers in Sydney. And to your point, we'll all be like, oh, you know, we hate Melbourne, blah, blah, blah. But really, we enjoy it. Yeah, we, we like we the like rivalry. The we love the hate. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's what it is. It, it's, if, if you're hating, if you're getting, you don't get hated on from above. Do you know what I'm saying? Correct. You get hated on oh. from people You're below. punching up. You don't punch down. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> well, wasn't that a little bit of fun, boys? I think if you have, or if you don't agree with our takes and you think that we're all wrong, please DM us. But if you do agree with our takes, please also DM us because we'd love to hear it. Where are we kind of sitting on the pulse of Sydney? We answer every single DM. Correct. Alrighty, that brings us to the end of the episode. I forgot to say this at the top. I'm going to probably forget by next week. Boys, I was walking down the street earlier this week and I saw perhaps one of the weirdest things. It was a woman walking. Mm, how strange. On her shoulders was a parakeet on each shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine you're walking down George Street yeah. and this woman, she didn't look deranged. Mm. She didn't look homeless because that's usually the kind of gear that they kind of do, like just mm. hang out with wild animals. Yeah. She looked put together. It looked like she had a job. And she just had two parakeets on each shoulder. Is it like, accessory a, like or? a pirate or something? <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I haven't been that confused in a while. Oh. And that's one for you listeners. But thank you for listening to this episode. We hope you enjoyed that. As always, please write in with any kind of content ideas that you have. Send us in your merch. We definitely want to start doing this series. We think it's a great idea. Otherwise, you can find our full episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And give us a follow on Instagram and TikTok and we'll catch you guys next week.